We start with this question. Why are some people given eternal life? We've got here, why given eternal life? So why are some people given eternal life? John, Jesus says this in John 10, 28. He says, and I give them, referring to his sheep, if you read the whole cha chapter of John 10, I give to them eternal life and they shall never perish. Now scripture says that not all humans will be given eternal life. In Revelation 21 verse 8, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually moral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, verse 8 is part of a two-verse group, both when read together. Revelation 21, verse 7, and then verse eight, 7 says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. So to inherit all things, you have to live for all eternity. You have to be given eternal life. Then comes verse 8 in contra contrast to he who overcomes inherits all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son and my child. Verse 8, but the cowardly, unbelieving, the abominable, and so on, will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So those who live ungodly and never repent are given eternal death. If you study your Bible, you'll see that. But those who overcome live with God forever, which is what most people really want. Most people have trouble explaining what overcome means. Jesus gives us more explanation in John 10, 27. My sheep, his true followers, hear my voice. So that's the first thing. They listen carefully to what Jesus tells them. And I know them. He has relationship with them because they listen carefully to what he tells. And they follow me or they do my ways. They do what I tell them to do. Verse 28. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Now, two plus billion Jesus following people will quickly say, Oh, I do hear the voice of Jesus. But Jesus speaks of those who do worship him, but they worship him in vain or worthlessly or to no value. Matthew 15, verse 8. These people, talking about some of the people, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. So you can sing about Jesus, you can talk about Jesus. And then he says, but their heart is far from me. Verse 9, and in vain, because their heart is far away from Jesus, in vain do they worship me, says Jesus, because they're teaching as doctrines, as two true doctrines, the commandments of men, not what Jesus tells people. Scripture says it is possible to worship Jesus. Most people don't see this, can't comprehend this. It is possible to worship Jesus and not be acceptable unto God. Now, we need to be hearing hearts worship kind of people. We have to hear what God is saying, and we have to hear with our heart what God is saying, and then we have to be willing to do what God is saying. Most Jesus followers are not taught to decide between men's opinions and Bible truth. They're just taught to believe whatever they're taught. To love Jesus, every person must commit to keeping the words that Jesus speaks and believing the words that Jesus speaks. John 14, 24. He who does not love me. Okay, Jesus is going to tell us now. He's going to give us this clear explanation. He who doesn't love me doesn't keep my words. And you say, well, I keep, <clears throat> I keep his words. I have a Bible. I keep the Bible at home. I read it. I keep his words. Okay, but what he was saying in the Greek, the Greek word there where he spoke, <clears throat> means to guard from loss or injury. So if you're keeping the words of Jesus, 
you are guarding the words of Jesus and you are keeping them from loss so what he actually truly said and meant you keep it so it doesn't get lost by men's commandments so and and so let me read that again Jesus spoke means to guard from loss or injury by keeping an eye on so you you watch it closely you are carefully watching what it is that Jesus says now billions are taught to think billions of Jesus following people <clears throat> are taught to think that they agree with Jesus when they actually disagree with Jesus which is it sounds crazy let's look at an example Jesus spoke these words you can look in your own Bible you can see it right there on the page it's as plain as day <clears throat> John 3 12 he says if I have told you earthly things if I've been telling you stuff that goes on here on the planet and you do not believe if I'm telling you earthly stuff and you don't believe the earthly stuff how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things so this is the verse before verse 13 <coughs> he is saying if you're not listening to me talking about earthly things and I want to tell you about heavenly things and you're not listening and you're not believing me then how how is it you're going to believe me if I tell you heavenly things then he goes on to verse 13 and he says something that billions of people read don't see it they don't understand it they don't believe it and they go on to the next verse he says in verse 13 John 3 13 no one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven that is the Son of Man who is in heaven now why people have trouble with that verse is beyond me but it clearly says no one has ascended to heaven except Jesus okay now you could say well when he said that nobody had but after he died then people ascended to heaven no then King David and Solomon I mean not Solomon but but Abraham Isaac and Jacob and all the fathers they they didn't ascend to heaven uh, they had to wait or something but this was written down in 95 AD like 60 plus years after Jesus said it by John writing like I say 60 plus years later now, did John not understand that it was still true 60 years later? If we read this verse slowly, we see that billions who say they agree with Jesus actually disagree with Jesus. Let me say it again, John 3.13, no one has ascended to heaven, but billions are taught that yes, you do ascend to heaven. Jesus wants you to send to heaven when Jesus said no one does ascend to heaven so it's just mind-boggling that people don't take the time to study their scriptures ignore the commandments of men and believe the pure words of Jesus we have to learn to agree with the Lord's words when Jesus says something, we've got to learn to say, yes, Lord, I agree with that which you just said, right? Most do not focus on the fact that one cannot love Jesus and disagree with him at the same time. If you're going to love Jesus, you have to love what he says, i.e. the words. Remember, Jesus said, Man must live by every word of God. Well, especially every word Jesus spoke. Luke 6, verse 46. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, says Jesus. Why, do, why are you saying, oh, we honor you with our lips, Jesus. You are our Lord. We love you. We love what you're doing. We love the fact that you want to give us eternal life. We love that you came and suffered and died and bled so that your blood could cover our sins. We love that, but you can't love Jesus. You can't have a relationship with Jesus if you disagree with what he's telling us. And that's why we have this Luke 6, verse 46. Why does, but why do you call me Lord, Lord? Jesus is saying, why do you bother? Why do you bother calling me Jesus, Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? 
Whoever comes to me, this is the next verse, verse 47. Whoever comes to me, says Jesus, and hears my sayings, pays close attention to my sayings, like if I said no man has ascended into heaven, they believe no man has ascended into heaven. And we've got like two billion people alive today that believe, contrary to what Jesus said, that you go to heaven when you die. And then back 2,000 years worth of people, how many of those have believed, contrary to what Jesus plainly spoke, that, that they, were, they were supposed to go to heaven when they die? So there's billions upon billions of people for the last 2,000 years. So verse 47, whoever comes to me, says Jesus, and hears my sayings, i.e., hears my words, i.e., listens closely to my words, i.e., pays attention to understand my words, and does them, i.e., also teaches it to other people, and people have been teaching you go to heaven when you die for thousands of years, contrary to what Jesus, and so they disagree with Jesus, and so they worship him in vain. And he says, he who comes and hears and does these sayings of mine, I'll show you what he's like. He gives an example of how this is going to work out. And he says in Luke 6, verse 48, He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. Now, it's a bunch of effort to dig deep to lay a foundation on bedrock. But this guy, he went to the trouble. He read the words of Jesus and he made the effort and he got deep understanding from it. And Jesus is saying, like, if you come to me, come to Jesus and you hear what I say and you do what I say, it's like man building, digging deep, building on the foundation of the rock, i.e. his worship of Jesus is rock solid. It's not in vain. To avoid vain worship of Jesus, we must reject the commandments of men. We have to learn to tell the difference between what's a commandment of men and what's a commandment of Jesus. Really quite easy. You go first to Jesus and you say, what's a commandment of Jesus? Oh, look here, verse 13. No man has ascended into heaven. So why do we believe everybody goes to heaven when they die? Why do we believe Aunt, Aunt Sarah is up in heaven smiling, looking down on us? Why do we believe that when Jesus said the opposite? So we must reject the commandments of men and only believe and live by the words that Jesus actually spoke and actually had written in Scripture. Most of those words you'll find in Red Letter Bibles there's only a small amount of, compared to all the words in the Bible. These are the primary, the top critical words that the Father gave to Jesus. Jesus came to earth. Jesus spoke them. He gave them to us. Thankfully, they write them in red in red letter Bibles, and we can see them quickly and easily. And we must learn to believe only and live by the words of Jesus. Now, when Jesus says, John 3, 13, no man has ascended to heaven, we have to decide, each one of us, whether to believe Jesus or men's words about Jesus. It's that simple. And, and in this case, it's so black and white. It said, Jesus said, no man has ascended to heaven. Humans, by the billions, say, everybody is going to heaven if they're Jesus people when they die. The most important thing a Christian can do is to study and be 100% sure that they believe the actual words of Jesus above everything else. John 14, 24. He who does not love me, this is Jesus speaking, he who does not love me does not keep my words or doesn't agree with my words. So some are given eternal life because they love Jesus and they love the words he spoke. 